Okay, so in this lesson, we'll start applying our initial CSS styles to our app component. And for now, we're just gonna build everything within this single React component, and we're going to try to pack the entire user form in here. If there's a need to break it up into smaller components down the road, we'll get there when we get there. And once we identify any areas of duplication, that's when we'll potentially break it down into smaller components. For now, we're gonna build everything within this single component in our app. So I'll begin by getting rid of this H1 and starting off with a top level div. This is just going to be a flex box that's going to wrap basically the entire page and it's going to provide a nice background that's going to occupy the entire screen and also center the flex children both vertically and horizontally on the screen. So I'm gonna add class name right here and just apply a whole bunch of Tailwind classes in a row. We're going to add flex. We're going to add flex row to make the flex direction row. We're also going to add items dash center and justify dash center. That is going to center all of the flex children in the middle of the page, uh, but align them in a row direction. I'm also going to add H dash screen, and that is going to apply a height of 100 of the viewport height. So this is going to occupy the entire screen. Then I want to show you a very cool feature of Tailwind, and that is that we can create a pretty impressive gradient background simply by combining a bunch of classes together. So I'll begin with a class called BG dash gradient dash two dash BR, and BR is short for bottom right. So this will create a background that will be a gradient color starting from the top left and proceeding to the bottom right. And in order to make this work, we of course need to specify the colors that the gradient is going to hold on both ends. So there is actually a whole collection of classes in Tailwind that start with the word from, and that is the starting color. So for example, I can put from blue dash 300, and that will start the gradient at that blue color. And then there's also a collection of classes that begin with the word two, and that represents the ending color of the gradient. So here, for example, I can put violet dash 400. And these are just arbitrary colors, but I will now have a background that is going to be a beautiful gradient going from this color of blue, it's right here now, to this color of violet on the bottom right. And with just three classes, we can have this gorgeous background with very minimal knowledge of CSS. And when I saw something like this in Tailwind, I was absolutely mesmerized by the library and how powerful it was and how easy it was to experiment and just build up whole bunches of UI elements with just a bunch of classes added together. Uh, really, really cool stuff. All right, so that is our kind of outermost wrapper container. In this div, I'm going to add another div. And this is actually going to represent the container for the form itself. So right here, I will add a div with a bunch of classes. So class name. I'm going to give it a width right here of 320 pixels. I'm gonna make sure it's rounded with the rounded class. We're gonna add a whole bunch of border classes. So border to give it a border, border dash solid to make it a solid border, then specifying the color of the border with border dash slate dash 500. That's a little gray color there. Then for the background, I will add BG dash white to give it a uh, not black, but white background. I'll add padding all around with P6. As a reminder, the P classes are all related to padding. And then I also wanna show you a very cool feature of Tailwind, which is how do we deal with responsiveness? So whenever you want to apply a style, but only at a specified screen size, it's actually the exact same operation. We're just gonna apply the same regular Tailwind classes. But we're gonna apply a prefix. So for example, there is a prefix called SM, which is short for small and that will only apply at a certain screen size. In this case, the small size, which is 640 pixels or a tablet size. So in other words, we can put any Tailwind class here after a colon and Tailwind will only apply that class when the screen size is at least 640 pixels. So the way this is written is all these classes will automatically be applied, but this one will only be applied starting from 640 pixels and up. So when we have a little bit more screen room to work with, I can increase the width. So for example, here, I can start with W80 and then progress up to W-96, which as we can see here is 384 pixels, so a little bit larger, but only when we have a screen of at least 640 pixels in size. All right, so here I am saving this, and this is now, I think, at least tablet size. But you can see if I start shrinking this right now, at a certain point, the box will shrink naturally, and that is because it is resorting back to its W80 class right here, 
only when it reaches a small screen size of 640 pixels will it actually expand to apply the alternate class, which is W96. And this applies to everything else. So any Tailwind class, you can prefix with a prefix like SM for small screens or MD for medium, LD for large, LG for large screens, and all of them have a corresponding uh, pixel width at which point they start applying. And you could build up a responsive UI this way without ever having to worry about media queries or writing your CSS uh, at, at all, right? Everything is just going to be combining Tailwind classes in line. And that is another cool feature of Tailwind. All right, so here is our basic box for our form. And here, we're just gonna add an H1 and a button. So the H1 is going to say welcome, and that is just going to greet the user. And right here, I'm gonna add a bunch of classes right here. I'm going to make this text centered with text center. I will make it a little bit larger with text to 3XL. That's going to apply a 30 pixel font. Then I'm going to add font dash bold to make it bold. And then I'm gonna apply a little bit of margin at the bottom so that I can create some spacing between the H1 and the button that I'm gonna add in just a moment. So I will do the MB series of classes, margin bottom, and I will do margin bottom six, which is 1.5 rem or 24 pixels of margin on the bottom. All right, so there is our welcome message. And then, as I mentioned, the only other thing I want in this lesson is a, is a button. And that button is going to have the text login into account. For now, I'm going to start building the form as if it's in one mode, which is the login mode. And then later on, of course, we'll expand it to have two possible modes, two possible versions, at which point the text inside the button will have to vary. But for now, we're just going to build the first iteration, which is the login mode. All right. So there is our button on the right. It has no styles by default. So let's add a couple, once again, using class name and a whole bunch of Tailwind classes. So I will give it a height with H10. I will give it W dash full to make it occupy 100% of the width of its parent. I will make it rounded with the rounded class. I will give it a thick border with border two, border dash two. I will make the border solid with border dash solid. I will make the border red with border dash red dash 500. And then, uh, one final thing to show you about Tailwind in this lesson, because we already talked about gradients and responsiveness, we can also apply hover effects and other pseudo classes to our elements, simply once again, by prefixing our Tailwind classes with certain prefixes. So for example, if we write hover colon, this will apply a Tailwind class, but only on hover. So for example, we know that Tailwind has a whole bunch of background classes starting with BG. So for example, I have BG red dash 100. So this will not apply a red background class by default, but it will apply a red background class on hover. So you can see as I hover my mouse right here, that's where we apply that light red background. So even hover effects and things like that are as simple as writing more Tailwind classes in line. We never actually have to go and write any custom CSS. And that's one of the things I love most about Tailwind because it's super simple to just you know practice and just play around. I could be curious and say, well, what would this look like with a blue border? And it's as simple as changing this to border blue, 500, observing the results on the right and you know staying with that. So switch it back to border red, but that's what I love about Tailwind is that quick iteration. And you also don't have to worry about naming things or nesting your selectors or specifically targeting these deep children that are really nested. It's just a matter of adding a whole bunch of classes in line from that predetermined, predefined list uh, from Tailwind. All right, so the beginning of our form is looking good. We have that nice white box, a nice gradient background, and our login to account button. And we're gonna continue building this uh, component in the very next lesson. So I'll see you there.